Evening Chem 20s, this is going to be the first of two videos on Boyle's Law. This is going to be our first law when it comes to the gas chapter, chapter four. So let's get started. If we take a look, Boyle's Law is a law that um, is used to describe the relationship between pressure and volume. When we go to use this law, when we're going to compare pressure and volume, we have to know that the amount of the gas is going to be constant, and so is the temperature of the gas. So this is a picture here of Boyle. Um, and if we take a look, he said that as the pressure on the gas goes up, the volume on the gas is going to decrease proportionally. So as one goes up, the other one goes down, and that's going to be the same for vice versa. So if pressure goes up, volume goes down. If volume goes up, pressure goes down. Now, this is one of those where if you think about it, you can actually probably reason through this and have come up with that scenario already. So if I take a look at this container right here, you'll notice that I'm going to put in a fixed amount of gas particles. So these red little circles are gas particles. So we have five gas particles. We have put the lid on the container so nothing can escape. And this is the volume inside the container. Remember, when volume is distance between particles. Pressure is how often they hit the side of the container. So if I was to push down on this and decrease the volume from this much volume to that much volume right there, notice I still have the same number of gas particles. There's still five. But when I decrease the volume, they're going to have to hit the sides of the container more often. So when my volume decreases in the container, my pressure is automatically going to increase because they're going to hit the side of the container more often. Again, we are making the same two assumptions. This is when the amount of gas particles, the moles of them, are constant, does not change. And this is also true for when the temperature of this, this is occurring in both scenarios on the left and on the right at the exact same temperature. Well, if we take a look at Boyle's Law and we were to graph Boyle's Law relationship, we would see that Boyle's Law has an inverse relationship. Meaning, as one of the variables goes up, the other one by default has to go down. This is the nature of the formula. We call this an inverse relationship. When one moves in one direction, the other one's going to move in the opposite direction. So as pressure is going up, you'll notice volume is decreasing on the graph. Now, looking at this scenario, if we applied one, let's say, kilopascals of pressure, this would be the volume that we would have. If we would double our pressure pushing down, you'll notice our volume will decrease by half. This is where there's that give-take relationship of inversely proportional. And that's going to be very important because the other gas laws are not inversely proportional. We're going to use this phrase, and I need you to know what it means. Well, here is our formula. Please write it down. More importantly, this formula has to be memorized. Every formula in Chem 20 is memorized. We do not have a formula sheet. We do not give you formulas. So our formula is going to be P1V1 equals P2V2. If I take a look at this, P stands for pressure. And when it's a one, that's going to be the starting pressure, or we like to call it the initial pressure. V1 is going to be the starting volume, or we like to call it the initial volume. And again, I want to point out pressure is measured in kilopascals. Pressure is measured in pascals. Pressure could be in atmospheres. Pressures could be in millimeters of mercury. Volume is in milliliters or liters. Pressure P2 will be final pressure. V2 will be final volume. The trick to this formula is we do not care what the pressure is measured in as long as P1 and P2 is in the same unit. So if P1's in kilopascals, P2 has to be in kilopascals. If P1's in atmospheres, P2 has to be in atmospheres. And that goes along the same for volume. Whatever V1 is for a unit, V2 has to be the same unit. So milliliters, milliliters, liters, liters. Again, we use this formula making the assumption that 
the number of gas particles and the temperature must be held constant in order to use Boyle's law. Now, if you flip in your data booklet to page three, depending on which data booklet you have, some of the data booklets will already have this in it, some of them will not. If at the bottom of the page, this piece of information is already written there, you're good to go. If not, please write in this tab and you can draw in this table at the bottom of your data booklet. The table says this, at STP conditions, meaning at a standard temperature and pressure, we know the pressure is going to be either one atmosphere or 101.325 kelvins. Sorry, one, one atmosphere or 101.325 kilopascals, excuse me, or zero degrees Celsius. Now, the temperature is not going to mean a lot to us right now because this formula has nothing to do with temperature. Tomorrow's formula will look at what the temperature means. So for right now, just copy this table into your data booklet if you don't have it already. SATP is different than STP. STP is standard temperature and pressure. SATP is standard ambient temperature and pressure. This is the difference between zero degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius, roughly room temperature. STP was at 101.325 kilopascals. SATP is at 100 kilopascals. So they differ by a little bit when it comes to pressure. They differ by a lot when it comes to temperature. What I would like to do is try one question, talk about all the nuances that go with this formula, and then we'll try, I'll have you try three questions on your own. So very first question we have, let's read through it together. A balloon contains one liter of air at SATP is placed at the bottom of a swimming pool and the volume of the balloon changed to 0 0.743 liters. Assuming that the water in the pool is the same temperature as the air, what is the pressure at the bottom of the pool? So we're assuming that the temperature of the water is going to be the same, it's constant. We're also assuming we're not gonna lose or gain any particles of water, it's also gonna be the same. So when we started the question, the balloon contained one liter of air. So we're gonna make a list of variables here over on the side. This is going to be our initial volume, 1.00 liters. It says that our initial volume is at SATP. So we can take a look at the table on page three of our data booklet that you either have or that you drew in. And we know that the pressure at SATP that we're gonna start at is going to be 100 kilopascals. Now, we're not going to worry about this for significant digits because if you remember the sig dig rules for standard values, ones that are come from standards from our data booklet, we don't count those as significant digits. So we're going to not use that number as significant. We also said that the balloon changed and had a volume of, so V2 of 0 0.743 liters. And we are trying to find what is the new pressure at the bottom of the pool? So we would like to find P2. Now, you don't get any marks for this organization, but this is where you're going to look and go, hey, do I like my units? So liters, liters. Remember our rule is both volumes have to be in the same unit. So if my P1 is in kilopascals, that means when I use the formula, P2 is also going to come out in kilopascals. This is critical. This is where I do any unit manipulation. This is where I change any units that I do not like. Okay, so for the first mark, and always for the first mark in chemistry, you get a mark for writing down the memorized formula. So P1V1 equals P2V2. Now, we are solving for P2, so we are going to solve for this guy right here. So we're going to move the formula so P2 is by itself. P2 equals P1 V1. Again, when we cross the equal sign, it's going to go from upstairs downstairs. So V2 is going to go in the denominator. Now, you will have earn a mark for having both those formulas, the memorized one and the formula moved around. If you forget to show me the formula, 
the original and the moved around, I forget to give you the mark. The second mark is going to be for substituting in the work with units. You cannot write a number in this class without attaching a unit to it. So P1 is going to be 100 kilopascals times V1, which is one liter, divided by V2, which is 0 0.7432 liters. You get a mark for substituting in numbers with units. No units, no mark. We're not giving half marks. So to find P2, we're going to take our calculator and we're going to type in anything on top we multiply, anything down below we divide. So 100 times 1, enter, divided by 0.743, enter. And my calculator number is 1 hundred and thirty four decimal five eight nine five zero oh two and notice liters on the bottom liters on top my unit's going to come out in kilopascals which makes sense because we're trying to find pressure again when we go to figure out significant digits we go back to the original question three sig digs three sig digs I have to put my answer into three sig digs. This number is going to cause this one to round up. So my answer is 135 kilopascals. You get your third and final mark for correct answer with a unit attached in the correct number of significant digits. You have to pay attention to the significant digits. Now, I want you to think about this. Notice, we do not go over here to look at sig digs, because over here, I might be changing a number from milliliters to liters, and we might have messed with the significant digits. I always go back to the original question to look. Three sig digs, three sig digs, my answer is going to be in three sig digs. Secondly, I want us to start thinking, does my number make sense? Since Boyle's law is inversely proportional, when one goes, one variable goes up, the other one goes down. So let's take a look over here. Volume went from one liter to 0.743. Volume went down. Therefore, we know pressure must go up. So we need an answer greater than 100. Well, our answer is 135 kilopascals. So we can assume we did the question correctly. Okay, this is the end of part one of the Boyle's Law video. On part two, we're going to do three more practice questions.